Good morning, everyone. Welcome to 315 BC 315 Life Skills, uh, to the course of Life Skills. Yeah. So today, uh, we're going to study on the conflict resolution. Even before we could get into the time of discussion, I request one of us to please lead us into a time of prayer. Can I request uh, Sister Rupa? Can you please lead us in a prayer? Sure, ma'am. Good morning. How are good you morning. feeling today? Uh, actually, I'm good. Last week, actually, we had, I had, for me and my husband, Paul, we both were affected with uh, red eye conjunctivitis. Oh, wow. And yeah, we both recovered now by God's grace. Thank you. Thank you so much, each of you all for praying. Sure, Thank you. Thank you. Father God, we come to your throne of praise this morning with thanksgiving and praise. Father God, Thank you for being with Pastor Paul and Nancy and granting them your healing and granting them your recovery and restoration in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this new morning in our lives as we come together as a class, Lord, to thy throne of grace, Master. Bless us. You are the God who blesses, with, blesses us with the skills we need, Lord God, as we are learning. Grant us a heart of understanding and perceiving and inculcating those skills to enhance the kingdom of heaven. Lord God, bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So let me share the presentation. So just a song, a simple presentation that I just put it up to keep our class interactive this week. Let me share it. Okay, so we're going to talk on conflict resolution. Here we go. Okay. Conflict resolution. So what is conflict resolution? Anyone from the class here all can share what is conflict resolution? So conflict resolution is nothing but it's a process in which two or more parties or two, uh, uh, two members, two or more members are involved in, uh, where they work towards a solution to get a problem or a dispute to be solved. So we see that these two members or a group of members involved to work together to achieve a solution that solves the problem in a way that is productive. So according to our notes, we have it, uh, we also have something called interpersonal conflict. So in interpersonal conflict, it has been broadly defined as conflict between two or more people. And according to Chambers English Dictionary, it defines as conflict as a violent collusion, a struggle or a contest, a battle or a mental struggle. So interpersonal conflict, may start with a simple disagreement, which can lead to a conflict. So those who are involved in this must try to escalate, uh, uh, you know, uh, beyond the disagreement. See how they can discuss and bring a solu solution. So it may be at a workplace or it may be at a ministry. It can be in any situation given so interpersonal conflict is generally defined as what happens when one person or a group of people prevents or attempts to prevent another person or group from achieving their goals. So, you know, what uh, there are types of interpersonal conflict. According to notes, there are three main types of conflict. One is the personal or the relational conflict which are usually uh, you know identified based on the self-image of the important aspects of a relationship uh, such as loyalty 
breach of confidence or perceived betrayal or lack of respect. The second one, it talks about the instrumental conflicts or about goals, structures, procedures. And the third talks about the conflicts of interest concerning the ways in which the means of achieving the goals are disrupted. So as we are discussing all this, what is the main reason that we have added this conflict resolution as one of the chapter in our life skill? Because it is one of the skill that is needed for each of us to develop. Let it be in a ministry or a workplace, a business, whichever area we are in, this is one of the skills that we need to develop. So let's look at some of the you know conflict management skills that we can develop. So here we see it can be approached using uh, different styles. So what are the styles? The styles may differ. The methods that we may um, utilize uh, to manage some skills. So how to manage successfully the conflicts? So we need to, you know, try with each other when certain conflicts happen, you try each skill with them. So as you try, you will learn to exercise that skill. So there are some skills that we can try uh, uh, applying it in different conflict situations. And actually, some of the scholars say they are most important skill, or they call it as the core skills that is needed in conflict resolution. So what is it? The very first one is active listening. What is it? Active listening. So they, they call it this as one of the core skill, where in active listening, we get to focus on, you know, on being attentive to what the other person ha has to say. So the skill here is commonly used as sales people to better connect with the customers during, you know, uh, the pitch to make a sale, something like that. So we need to attend. We need to be focused on what each other are trying to share. So we need to actively listen to both parties or both team members' view of the point what they're trying to say. The second is emotional intelligence. Emotional, uh, your emotional intelligence is described as the ability to perceive and understand other people's emotion. So this skill is essential when we are managing the conflict because it prevents the situation from escalating. So if we can effectively interpret, uh, you know, the opposition's emotion, if we're able to interpret each other's emotion, uh, yeah, so that the communication can become easier, even without provoking the other person or uh, which may trigger, uh, you know, into a conflict. But if we can understand through the emotion and trying to handle it by being understanding, so that by by that we can actually avoid from getting into an intense uh, conflict between two people, or it can also be between us and the other person, or between two other people. So with that, we will move on to the third point, which is one of the core skills in conflict management, is patience. Patience is one of the core skills. So here we see conflicts are rarely simple to overcome. Because it's very complicated. It's so difficult because people don't like to be wrong, don't like to be accepted that they are wrong. So we need to have patience. It's important to keep our mind that the problem may not be solved right away, but then the solution will come eventually. So we need to give time and we need to analyze, we need to see how we can solve the problem. It can be personally within the heart, within, like it may be us involved in that conflict or maybe between two people and see what solution can be given. 
how we can handle the situation differently. If we are part of any kind of conflict or misunderstanding, what we could do is sit back, think in patience, how we can handle the situation better. Even if we are right, still, because the scripture says as much as possible, live in peace with each other. So to maintain that peace, what is that we can do? It is okay sometimes even to say sorry to calm the opposite person. You know. So it's by we saying sorry, it's not that we have done the mistake or it's not that by we saying sorry, you know, uh, we, are, uh, we are exalting the other person. But then as per the scripture, it says by we saying sorry, we're just bringing peace in the relationship trying to have an understanding, trying not to, not to you know, uh, give heed to this conflict that is happening or misunderstanding that is happening. Instead of being the relationship, you know, broken and, you know, having the enemy have its way in it, but we are just trying to say sorry, forgive, and, you know, trying to see what you can do to solve the And even if there's a clear answer, uh, rushing to a solution can make people feel that they are left out in decision-making process. So it's always good for us to take time, um, you know, be patient, and also give the other person the time to think, uh, act, or react on the decision that has been made. Now, the fourth point that we would like to look into in the core skills are uh, impartiality. Impartiality. It is very important. Because this is another reason why the conflict can be difficult to resolve because they don't always stay focused on the conflict itself. Because a conflict can sometimes uh, you know, serve as an opportunity to previous grievances that uh, may have led to in uh, may have led to this conflict between these two parties so now we need to handle it in such a way by active listening hearing both the parties and trying to give your point it is not the solution that we try to give but then we just try it as a suggestion as a point to make we can fairly share that to the members and the fifth is positive. It's a very important thing to be positive, or even in that uh, situation, even where there's a lot of disagreement or conflict or anger in the head, even during that situation, you can see what is a positive thing that we could speak about. What can be the positive thing that may calm everyone about? Even if you do agree, a uh, half-hearted compromise doesn't uh, sometimes, you know, help each other. But then you try your best to give some solution, to uh, you know, uh, to give a fair points to the team, to uh, to each other, and so that they may think they can ponder. Because if somebody is in uh, in the mood of anger, I'm not too sure how much they can think from the other person point of view. So it's always good for us to be positively giving some kind of suggestion or some kind of point to both the people so that uh, the conflict may not increase but try to resolve within each other with each other with a positive attitude because being positive attitude is much required and much helpful especially during this time. The sixth point which is the last one I would like to discuss in code one of the core skills is being open in communication most of the conflicts actually arises because the uh, there is miscommunication or there is no transparency transparency between the people between the team so the relationship between the people between the team, between the ministry leaders in the ministry are involved, you know, uh, in having a good, 
communication. If they are transparent, the understanding becomes much better. But if there's no transparency in the communication, that's when misunderstanding or conflicts tries to creep in into uh, the environment in the ministry or in a workplace, which becomes very unhealthy. So it's always good for us to have open communication. Okay, we finished this. Okay, the next we would like to discuss on the conflict resolution skills. There are about 14 resolution skills listed here. Let's discuss as a class. Let's, let's share our views on these 14 skills so that I'm sure each of us during our lifetime, I'm sure we would have come across a you know, different type of conflicts. It can be at home, between our parents, between our siblings, between our friends, lecturers, uh, ministry leaders, in any aspect. Okay, so how uh, we have handled it better or what could we uh, what we could have done in uh, done better okay let's discuss so the first point says use yes and statements why do you think it is important for us to use yes and the statements class anyone so you can share your suggestion your views on this, why do you think uh, we need to say a statement yes and use a statements that can resolve a con conflict? It can be no, it can be yes. Um, why do you think instead of giving a single yes or no in time of a, a, a conflict, it's good for us to give a statement which may uh, come across a, a, a kind of uh, solution between the team? Why do you think it is important for us to give a statement than you know responding just by saying yes and no? Pastor, well, it's our opinion by saying yes or no. I believe. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Because of time, I just share some of. It's just a suggestion. Okay. Anyone can just you know unmute or. Okay. There's some people chat. Let me see. You can raise your hand, unmute, and share your views. Okay, when you give a statement, we say that, you know, we understand your point of view and we also uh, pay attention to them. Siddh uh, Asha says that and Siddhant says to show that we are with the other person. Okay, okay. Anyone else in the class? Abhinav says saying yes, yes empowers Team. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, in time of conflict, you know, uh, rather than we uh, getting very defensive about an attack of an uh, argument, it takes an opportunity for us to see things from a different point of view. So, when there's a conflict, we need uh, we don't have to agree with the person but uh, by saying um, yes or no, but then we need to explain why you're saying, why are you going to say yes or why are you about to say no? We have to explain so that the other person can understand uh, that uh, what is the point that you're trying to so it's always good for us not to say a single statement saying, yes, you're right, no, you're wrong. Instead of that, let's make a statement. Maybe we could have looked into this perspective that 
could have helped us to do our work better. Instead of saying, no, you're wrong, or yes, you're right, we could just make a statement. So by making a statement, you're actually conveying your message. You're wrong, yes, you're right, or no, you're wrong, whatever. So instead, we need to change, I hear you, uh, but, and use a statement to explain it. At the same time, you can say, yes, I understand, and, and try to explain. So these statements help the other person to you know, listen, to give heed to your point that you are making, and also understands why are you saying what you are saying. Okay? It's always good in conflict, not just to say yes or no, but then use statements that can bring in more clarity, much understanding to the team or to the person. Okay, now let's move on to the second point. Okay, you're not able to see the slide. Sorry, I thought you can view what I'm saying. Okay, this is the slide. So the second point we are discussing on don't point fingers. Why do you think that we should not we shouldn't we shouldn't point fingers? Pointing fingers can be adding fuel to the fire. <laughs> Rather than resolving, it will escalate. Yes, thanks, Abhi. That's right. Exactly. You know, it sounds very offensive. It shows disrespectful when we point fingers. So we don't have to blame each other. Instead, we need to see what is the best way to solve a conflict by allowing each person to you know share their point of view share why they are not able to agree or disagree so after all that we would like to appreciate for being open for sharing their point of view and see what best can be done the third point let's move on to the third point let the person explain themselves and actively listen why do you think this is important and conflict resolution skills. Why do you think the skill is important to allow the person to explain themselves and we should actively listen? Okay, if, I'm, if I may want to say something. Yes. Okay. Why I believe that we should pay um, attentive or actively listen to the person so that we don't misunderstand them. Exactly. So that we don't misunderstand them, we don't misinterpret what they're trying to say. It's very important for us to allow the person to explain. Explain. So when we explain, we get the solution. Sometimes when we try to explain, we understand them much better. We get the solution for the problem from them itself. So we should always take time to listen think and then plan okay with that we will move on to the fourth point okay uh, um, i think in my slide uh, it's actually use i statement it's not the slash it is i i'm not too sure why it has appeared that way i can correct it Yeah, it's corrected now. So you use I statements. Why do you think we should use an I statement? So that there's no room for blaming. Correct. Correct. So, uh, you know, similar to what was discussed earlier, like pointing out fingers, a series of statements that could begin with you, 
can come across in the conflict. You did this, you did that, you know, blaming the other person. So it's always good in conflict. Uh, it shouldn't be about what the other person is doing. Come on. Um, I think it, uh, it's all about uh, what we believe, what we are going to do right, and how to get uh, the other person, the other side uh, person to understand. So by we using I statements such as, I feel like I'm not getting a chance to explain myself, rather than me telling, you are not listening to me. No, that can offend the other person. It can only increase the conflict. Or, you know, it can lead to series of argument when we keep blaming the other person. Instead of saying that, we can use I statement to ourselves, saying that, please hear me. Or allow some time that I would like to explain myself. Uh, sometimes it's also good to, yeah, I think somebody has raised their hand here. Has someone raised their hand? Let me make out. No. Um, okay, you can please unmute and speak because I'm not, okay, Kelly has raised their hand. Okay, Kennedy, please go ahead. I think using I makes one bear responsibility. Uh, by using I makes one to bear I, responsibility. One to bear the responsibility. Okay, that's right. Okay. Anyone else would like to add to it? Okay, so no one can, uh, so by using I or uh, trying to explain ourselves, sometimes it's good because, uh, you know, no one can disagree with your opinion, with your feelings, with your belief, or with what you're standing by. So plus they can make a more res respectful debate that reminds all the parties who are involved in it that conjectively complex humans are so it's always good to explain it from your point of view. OK, let's move on to the next fifth point. Maintain a calm tone. So do you think in conflict resolution, the tone plays a vital role? Cool tempers. Cool tempers. Let us don't clear when tones are down. Calm. Okay. Anyone else? Calm tone can increase increase receptivity calm tone. of the yeah. person who is listening. Yeah. Please go ahead, Abhi. It's cut. Ma'am, uh, I'm saying a calm tone can increase the other person's receptivity of understanding and, uh, you know, our motive or our uh, statement, whatever the thought of, thoughts of our heart is. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it is very good for us to, you know, uh, maintain a calm tone so that, you know, even the other person can hear us. And it's very important. Anyone else would like to add to it? OK, I want to say that um, having a calm tone can help you avert unforeseen circumstances. Yes. OK. Ma'am, sometimes. Calm tone also irritates the other person that you are not uh, <laughs> you are calm every time when the other person is so irritated. That also sometimes triggers the other person. Yeah, 
Yeah. So that's why in conflict resolution, it's always OK. Maybe you're directly looking at each other. You're at the same place, or you're going to phone. But the body language and other things add to it. What is the other person expecting? Sometimes you know we may have to wait until the other person's emotion is being led, so that we can actually uh, eventually plan and explain ourselves out. Okay, by not trying to increase it, but times you know most of the time in conflict, um, you know the tone actually differs. It is not actually uh, we don't try to maintain the calm tone when you disagree with the person. When you feel the person is just not understanding, or during the time of conflict itself, people can say that there's something wrong between these two people. The the look, the body language, the tone actually clearly states that there's something wrong. Okay, uh, I read it somewhere. Like you know, why uh, during the time of conflict, people don't talk in calm tone. Why, though they are very close, close by, they can actually easily hear each other. But why do they raise their voice, shout, yell, cry? They just um, bring up different emotions at the time of conflict. Why do you think it happened? Why do you think all these emotions happened? Yeah, please go ahead. And then We also see there's a scripture in Proverbs 15, 1, a soft answer turns away from, but a harsh word stirs up and the true thanks open. But what happens? Why during a time of conflict, two people raise their voice? Ma'am, probably they, they are trying to be heard. They're trying to be heard. They feel they are not being understood or heard. So the raising up voice, maybe the thought process is that, please listen to me. Yes. Yes. Thanks, Amir. Yes, please go ahead and say. Yes. Uh, the, just to add to what has been said, um, there's a mixture of lots of emotions raging within. And so most times uh, people yell, because of the emotions boiling within. And um, it would have been better to actually pull back to be and then um, get back to talk to each other when um, their emotions are calm. So in the in the face of their emotions being heightened, people tend to express their raging emotions in the tone of their voices. Yes, thanks, thanks, Amy. Agreed, agreed with what, what Abhi shared. What Say shared is actually much important because it is a common thing during the conflict. The voice actually raises to show up the emotions or I want to be heard. That's true. But a matured person, that's why we need to develop the skill. The skill needs to be developed. Somebody who actually masters or, you know, who is trying to master the skill tries to intentionally. Do this intentionally, maintain that calmness and ready to discuss with the other person. Even though if the other person is not, uh, you know, ready to discuss or whatever they are, re doesn't matter what the other person's reaction is, but knowing the importance of staying calm during the time of conflict is something that we need to develop. We need to get this skill. Developed. So with that, we will move on to the next point. Show a willingness to compromise or collaborate. Show a willingness to compromise or collaborate. Anyone from the class? Yes, okay, I want to say something. Okay, Shay, you can go. No, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, one thing, I'm collaborating or or compromising for me, I'm looking at it in different ways. It all depends on what we're collaborating on or what we are 
compromising on. So if I say that what I'm compromising or what I'm collaborating on is going to be, it's going to be a benefit, you know, for all, or it's going to be a positive move, you know, for all, because I don't need to compromise when I know that what the other person is doing is right. So I can collaborate, you know, when I know that the other person is on the right track or will I say what he or she is saying is is something that will bring development, is something that will bring um, a positive change. All I just need to do is to collaborate. But compromising, I can't really say what I'm compromising on because compromising, it's more like, you know, putting my reputation on the line. So I don't know. I just wanted to chip in this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Edison. I see. Yeah, say it, please go ahead. Um, j just to add from a different perspective, I think when we talk about the willingness to compromise and collaborate, first of all, when two people or more people are in conflict, most of the time it's actually for us to make our stance known and accepted. But as we're learning today for us to resolve a conflict sometimes there is need for us to compromise not in a negative way um and there's also need for us to collaborate now this can be seen contextually uh, for instance in a marriage there are times that a couple has to you know what um compromise and there will be times that they need to collaborate to do something to achieve for the betterhood of the family. Um, in a corporate setting or in a church, there are also times that, um, not necessarily, again, like I said, you're compromising or for a negative thing, but basically uh, you're just going to pull back on your own stance just so that at the end of the day, everyone um, is kind of carried along and heard. And there are times that you all need to come together basically you put away your own um your own ideology and look at the better who they gain for the larger good you know and all that so i think it just depends on what context what the situation is but there has to be always that willingness is very important because there's always this likelihood during conflicts that everyone wants his or her own opinion heard and done but I think there has to be a willingness for either compromise for, for a positive reason or collaborate depending on the situation. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Say, for sharing your point. Yeah, Kennedy, you can go ahead. I see your hand raised. Thank you very much. I just wanted to get some direction. What we are discussing, are you in with the as a mediator or as an agreed person? Can you not hurt? Can you be a little loud? Uh, I just want some direction to this. Eh? What we are discussing is it on a grief, if, for example, me as an aggrieved person or me as a mediator. Am I acting as a mediator or as a aggrieved person? I'm applying all this. Thing? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, sure. Okay, to compromise or call or collaborate as a mediator or as a Agreed person. I'm okay. the person who's wrong. Or the person who's wrong. Okay. So it can be any situation. It can be the person actually involved in it, or it can be a mediator. So what yeah, you'd like to share it can be any anyone. It can be any person. So would you like to share from the person who's a mediator's point of view, or you would like to share from the person who's actually involved in it? I don't know how to apply some of these things. Okay. Suppose I'm a mediate to two brothers who are agreed. I'll just give direction on that. You can share your point, even if it's a mediator, you can share how should they handle it or why is it is important for the willingness to compromise and collaborate. Why should a mediator give the suggestion to you know compromise and collaborate with each other? Okay, we see Harrison, your hand has been raised. Would you like to add? 
Okay, can I share a practical example? Sure, sure. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Um, my wife, you know, and and the family, my wife's family, they do get um, they do have this um get together. You know, they have this um yearly get together where they all come together and share things. So when they gathered, you know, I can tell you that there was a serious conflict. And in that conflict, I was so involved in that conflict because it's more like um, the parents, you know, wanted me to stick to some rules and regulations that was not really going down well with me. So in the sense that, okay, it's more like they want to predict for me what happens in my marriage or whatever it is. And my wife, you know, was in you know, a kind of, you know, asking me to like, you know, follow their instruction and the rest of them. And this thing can be very, very risky in the sense that whatever decision I take at that moment will determine what my marriage will look like. And we're talking about compromising and collaborating, right? Yes. Now, it is, it is possible for me to collaborate and compromise so that there will be peace, but at the detriment of the peace of my marriage. So in this case, I had to tell them, I said, okay, I understand every point of view, but I cannot accept this proposal. Because the only thing I threw to them is that if I was the one telling you what happens in your marriage, then you can tell me what happens in my marriage. But, uh, but as it stands, I cannot accept that I take instructions you know, from you on what happens in my marriage. So one thing I'm, the point I'm trying to make is that when it comes to compromising, maybe the one question I want to ask is what are we compromising on? Or what are we collaborating on? Because our collaboration can either bring more harm to the situation, or it could make you know the person feel good, you know, for a particular time while we are destroying things. That's one thing I'm looking at. So I just wanted to bring in this practical view so that we can also see a different angle of what you know, collaborating and um, compromising can look like in a conflict or in a situation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Harrison, for sharing and illustrating a uh, practical uh, conflict that you handled. Thank you. So one of the way uh, compromise uh, can also be about, uh, you know, most of our interruptions ourselves involved in that. So, in, uh, you know, in most of the countries, we see that it's essential to come to some sort of agreement between both parties. Sometimes when the, we ourselves may be involved in the conflict, it's always good for us to simply need to let go of our pride um, let go of that ego or the grip over the argument and show the uh, the opposite party that you care about the situation. So it's always good, uh, like the, the previous point when we said, uh, when we shared point three, when we said, when we let the other person explain their point of view, we should be a person at the same time we, we understand it. We should not, you know, hold on to our pride. Just let go of pride, and be understanding, and let the other person know. Yes, as you care, even I do care. So maybe for uh, to come in, uh, to come to a solution, we can say, and goodness or wellness of the team and the ministry. So let's go ahead with what you said. Let's try it out. So there's peace. There's oneness. There's, uh, you know, um, there's actually a uh, strive to be in unity. We're trying to, you know, uh, come on that common level ground so that we can work together, you know, to achieve something, to achieve the goal that has been set. We can do that. Okay, with that, let's move on to the seventh point. Don't talk behind people's back. Do you think it's very important skill?
Yes, please go ahead. Do you think? So we see that or when it's a good time to share the details of a conflict with others. Why should we not talk about it with anyone or talk behind the person's back? Yes, Mr. Christopher, please go ahead. Uh, so yes, uh, so this this is actually, uh, in a way, uh, uh, spreading gossip, and uh, you know we don't have that the person who we are talking about is not in not in you know not there to you know either defend himself or you know explain the situation. So uh, this is this is in a way it is gossip. And uh, it can, uh, you know, it can spoil people's reputation. It can, um, you know, can make uh, things, uh, uh, you know, worse for the for the person. Uh, even if even if there's some valid points that make that that uh, that have been discussed, uh, that is one danger. And the other part is also that, uh, uh, you know, when when we talk about um, again someone uh, behind their back, sometimes that uh, those um, discussions can get. Um, uh magnified it can be can be can be changed uh you know people can make assumptions and then you know it really spreads uh you know uh, a completely uh, different uh, uh line of uh, you know discussion uh which again it's it's, it's not is not um, uh, it's not good so yeah so the those are the those are the points i want to raise thank you thank you Yeah. Okay. Same person. Okay. So one of the reason uh, in conflict resolution that we should always build is we need to build it on the ground of honesty with one another, so that the trust is the trust is not lost and the problem remains confidential. So while uh, we may feel that uh, we have this urge to share so that we feel better, urge to vent out so that we may feel better if you're you're into that situation or emotional drive what we could do is one of the suggestions is to write out a journal write a journal share your view share your point share what's happening just write your feelings out of the journal so that's one of the way where you can vent out that urge or if you it's or if you feel you know uh, good when you share it with a human with a person directly so in that way um, make sure that you do not share with a person who's working in the same ministry or who's working in the long side or the person who knows this person okay share with somebody outside who has no ties to that person who has no knowledge of this person so that this person name remains anonymous so this way we can protect the privacy of the conversation, just that for you to emotionally be out. So it's very important for us to not to talk behind people's back. Okay. Um, yeah, we see Asha has commented because we not want someone to talk behind a back and that may hurt the person. True, we have a bit of say that it makes them feel more insecure, betrayed. Yes, that may go on for a long time. So, to avoid all this, it's always good not to share in that person's back. Yeah, I think with that, we can end the session with a word of prayer and we will continue uh, from point eight onwards in our next class. So, can I request one of us to please um, pray and end the session? Siddhartha, please. Oh, okay, please. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Thanks. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we bless your name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Thank you for the message for today. Thank you for the words we've heard. And Father, we know that we can still be victims of what we've been taught. And I pray, Lord, that you will help us, O God, to overcome every conflict and every challenges 
that come before us. I pray, Lord, that you will give us the ability and the grace of God to be peacemakers and not um, troublemakers. I pray, Lord, that even as we've heard this word today, that we'll take it to heart and bring glory to your name, even when we find ourselves in conflicts and challenges. Blessed be your holy name. We thank you, God, for your servant whom you've used to speak to us today. We pray for, for more wisdom. We pray for more knowledge and understanding to do your work. I thank you for my fellow students that you will help us to achieve and to become that which you have made us to be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining today's session. God bless you. We'll continue to discuss this in the next class. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank, Thank you, you so Pastor. Much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.